Thank you to Dr. Strangelove61 for their generous donation as a YouTube member. If you would like to join them in their generosity, the link to become a YouTube member is in the description, or you can click the join button down below. Oh, yes, it has come. The fucking update has arrived. Jesus. Fade away. Hello everyone, my name is Deckerlink, the Drained Unprofessional, and welcome back to Kamiya, the Adastra sequel. We are here, and we're we're here to see what what is new. I cannot wait to see what this is. So let's just go into it. At first, I didn't understand the significance of the ship. Veteris's excitement did seem a bit overblown, even for him. It descended in a quiet, controlled manner as the sun made the metal gleam. I did not think that it was all that different from Adastrian ships. Indeed, it appeared a bit more smooth in its architecture, and it was definitely larger than any I'd seen before. But it was simply that, a different version of what I had seen in the past. However, as we waited on the roof for takeoff preparations to be made, I finally realized why this was so significant. This isn't parental tech. This is Camian tech. Unlike the many ships that fly through the air above the capital, it was not gifted by the parents to the Camians. This was built by the Camians themselves. By engineers that were not only knowledgeable in how to fix ship components when they broke down, but how to actually build them. And when taking that into consideration, it is certainly impressive. I've known this to be the case since studying Camian history and culture, but for some reason it's hard for me to comprehend. It even frightens me a bit as I climb aboard the sibling-built craft, even though it appears more comfortable and even more stable than machinery built by the parents. The sense of awe and reverence comes to a sudden end, however, as we board and walk through the corridor. That's when I happen to peer out the window, looking out over the lake, a rather pleasant view, before suddenly the view zooms backwards. It happens so fast that I go from seeing the Imperial Gardens to seeing what I realize is the entirety of the moon, all over the course of just a few seconds. There we are, on the deck of the USS Camia or whatever, the suddenness of it all and the odd sensation of seeing such a quick movement yet feeling none of it makes my stow match turn. My body leans forward as if wanting to fall out of the window and I force myself upright before the others might notice. Luckily, Amicus and Veteris are looking out the window as well, seemingly untroubled. My sudden lurch gets the attention of who is behind me though and Nefru gently holds onto my elbow. Are you all right? Your first view of Camian tech. Why would I do that to my throat? <laughs> oh fuck this! That oh, I regret that voice choice. <laughs> voice choice. Anyway, what the fuck was I? There weren't <laughs> usually weren't windows on the few transport ships I'd seen in the been on in the past, but now that I can see, it's almost like when I would go sailing with friends on the ocean, I would become terribly seasick. This is all at once, though. Fine. I'm fine. Aw, oh, fuck, I forgot his voice, too. God damn it. Oh, he's Coach Grifter. Okay. You don't look fine. The big wolverine sidles up next to Nefru, looking at me closely, which is exactly what I'd rather not be happening right now. I'm... Oh, warp speed! Then the stars bend in a most queasy way, in the most queasy way imaginable, and I stumble to the side again. You are most certainly not fine. Is this your first time in the stretch? Well, of course he has a neft. The hell do you think? Bullshit. Nefro is moving me away from the window, but I'm already looking away, horrified. Not by the stretch, but because of the feeling growing, in growing inside me. I'm gonna vomit in front of everyone. Somehow, Amicus and Veteris have continued on their way, deep in conversation that I've uh, that deep in conversation that I vaguely feel I should be listening to. But that'll have to wait. I'm fine, just wondering where a lavatory might be. 
My voice is slightly louder than it should be, though Amicus must be louder because I can hear him even though as Nefru guides me through the ship. Mm, we are moving rather fast. Of course! The Cabians developed a drive better than the one the parents lend us! <laughs> oh god, <laughs> I'm gonna regret that. I allow myself to be pushed along until we reach a door that opens automatically without any panels being touched. This area is the living quarters. I'm not sure where you'll be bunking, but we'll be used sharing this toilet. We move towards an even smaller door, one that does require a push of a panel. Considering the journey is only about 12 hours, it should be somewhat tolerable, I think. Do you need anti-nausea medication? Too late for that. <laughs> Nefru makes as if to follow me into the lavatory, probably wanting to help like last time. I'd rather he not see me like this a second time. Uh, fine, just... I'll be back. Ha <laughs> ha, look at these whole... I quickly move into the little room, leaving a perturbed Nefru behind as I fiercely stab at the panel inside the lavatory until the doors slide shut. I stand over the toilet for several seconds, vaguely thinking to myself that it's hardly different from the ones on a dasher before what's in my stowmatch comes out. Ew. I'm in the lavatory for a little while, maybe about 10 minutes, embarrassed, but also grateful that I managed not to be sick in the corridor like my stow match wanted to be. I'm running my paws under the faucet, cleaning myself up before the stream of water suddenly stops and an unfamiliar voice rings in my head, making me yelp out loud. Oh, I get it. Let's just, let's just go with calm. Because <laughs> cause there isn't enough weird fucking voices in this game. Let's throw calm into the mix again. Apologies. Paul washing water limit has been reached. I stand there, staring at my own reflection in the mirror, deciding that what I'd heard came from within my head. But how? I feel myself start to panic just slightly before I realize that like previous tech I've had interacted with, it must be from my lingua. So I respond. Uh, yes? Who is this? I get an immediate response in return. I am um. The state-sponsored AI of Kamia. Okay, so now it's not calm, it's Om. <laughs> they took the C out of calm. Oh, oh, uh, yes, I know of you. I've studied, I trail off reminding myself that this is an AI and it does not care what I've studied or about anything at all. You have studied me. The AI asks after a polite pause. This is very odd. Of course it's odd that it's speaking directly into my lingua. Calm was not able to do that, I don't think. Well, you take the C out and all of a sudden it's a little better. But something else is even more strange about this AI than I... That I'm trying to put my finger on. Oh, is this going to be a fucking 2001 A Space Odyssey? Is he going to be singing Daisy Daisy, give me your answer true? Yes, I, I did not expect you to speak through my lingua. It was a bit startling. Apologies, CPO. I was converted to lingua only use. Oof. <laughs> That's a breathe in voice. I run out of. Unless advised otherwise. This is to protect the privacy of all that I am speaking to. Oh, so it's like the codec in Metal Gear Solid. Only silence speaks talk when it. Silence beats talk when it comes to safety. That's the line. I feel as if I would remember that bit of information if I came across it in my studies. It implies that the Kamians are, have learned how to access and manipulate the lingua directly. While it's impressive, it also rekindles that feeling of fear. What else might they be able to do that they can fully access the tiny piece of machinery embedded in my brain? Do you really know the extent of Kamian knowledge and power? I have a feeling not! Uh, <laughs> is it really possible to do such things alone, without parental help? As I'm contemplating this, Om um fills the silence, like a sapient noticing a lull in the conversation. Are you finished? If not, I can provide you with the water-free methods to sanitize yourself. <gasps> Unfortunately, our water reserves are limited. Uh, no, no, I'm fine, thank you. You are welcome, CPO, and it's a pleasure meeting you. You as well. I know what bothers me about this AI, aside from accessing my neurotech without my consent or knowledge. With Calm, 
I never felt as if he was truly intelligent. I never felt as if he had thoughts or feelings as he communicated. I would say Calm is comparatively stupid, but he's simply a program that consumes information, analyzes, and then outputs a sentence based on that information. This Kamian AI is something different, and I wonder how widespread it is on Kamia. The eerie feeling persists as I stare into the mirror, for some reason becoming suspicious of even my reflection, as if it is not mine. I look away and adjust my robes, trying to keep my emotions under control. Now is not the time to become paranoid. As I was taught during my diplomatic training, always be suspicious, but never paranoid. That only makes you appear more suspicious, and I have a feeling that being suspicious of mirrors would be categorized by most as paranoid, if not psychotic. With that in mind, I look into the bureau one last time to assess the state of my facial fur before tapping the panel and stepping out into the corridor. Uh, oh! Ah, uh, uh, hello. I jumped, and now I quickly smooth down my robe, a gesture that I feel looks inherently suspicious. Hello. I pause, trying to think of something to say, though I come up pathetically short, so I simply say what would be most normal in this situation. Did you need the lavatory? No, just checking to see if you're well. You looked shaky a few moments earlier. As Nefru confirms the reason I thought he might be lingering here, I feel a small flash of irritation. He's looking after me, which is kind and generous of him, as he has no reason to do so. Other than gathering intelligence, of course, but it makes me feel childish. And considering that is the opposite of how I want to appear, I would rather he not do it. I adjust my expression to appear more serious, but also calm. A cool, emotionless look. I am fine, thank you, Neferu. Please do not worry for my well-being. I do not wish to be the reason for you neglecting your duties. Oh, fuck! Oh, shit! He is ready to stab us in the face with that stare. The look on Neferu's face is hard to describe. It's certainly not pleasant. And though he doesn't say anything, I'm taken aback. Though I do my best to hold my own expression. Now the moment of silence passes, and I begin to think over Camian etiquette, wondering if I violated some type of social norm. Of course, Nefru would be understanding of such things, but considering that we are not on a Dastra anymore, perhaps he is now less forgiving. Just as I begin to open my mouth to ask what the issue is, Nefru finally speaks. I see. Very well. I shall leave you to attend to your own matters, then. Apologies for bruising your wolven pride. Oh! Ooh, he is petty! He petty! Oh, shit, he backhanded your bitches! Nefru turned on his heel before briskly walking away. I stand there alone, the low hum of the ship's various moving parts, the only sound filling the heavy silence while I try to understand what had just happened. I had acted within diplomatic norms. Really, any interaction among diplomats is normal, as long as only words are used. And you never state your true intentions. Pre present and present an aura of civility, even if your intentions are clearly malicious or even barbaric. This is one of the main issues of pre-Drusus Adastra. Apparently, woven diplomats of the era routinely took swings at other siblings, and even amongst themselves when they became angry or offended. Despite this being over 10,000 years in the past, it is a reputation that we still cannot rid ourselves of. I suppose it's not helpful that our own experimental attempts at a republic have resulted in brawls within the Senate in just the past year. I don't doubt that this was shown gleefully across the news channels of the other siblings. While I might admit that Wolven Hubris has been our downfall throughout history, I still do not take kindly to being looked down upon. Like I'm some type of savage. Ooh, we're getting some parallels between uh, us, this character, the name I do not remember, Sepio, there we go, and the main character of Adastra. Because they also were treated like a fucking brute. 
We have our own culture, our own language, our own universities, from which we take bricks and smash in the skulls of the elite who suck the cacks of all those above them while... Wow, wow, what the fuck? I feel that my that despite my admiration for... Oh! Oh, I forgot! He had a fucking... Yeah, he had he has some PTSD of being fucking attacked. Okay, yeah, I yeah, I, uh, that would explain what that was about. I was like, what the fuck? But no, yeah, it's been a while. When the fuck did that first episode come out? That's not when the uh, update is specifically happened. Four months? It was September, Tw September twenty twenty. Shit, it's been a while. <laughs> what? But I, ugh, fuck, whatever. Anyway, sorry, moving on. And I feel that despite my admiration for Kami as a whole, they have their own issues with hubris. Nefer is a clear example of that. Wolven pride. The hackles along my shoulders begin to rise, and I work to contain myself. What an odd and frankly childish thing for him to say. I suppose it was insensitive of me to act in such a manner towards someone who so recently called me a friend, but... His reaction was oddly intense and irritating. What I then realize is that part of my mission is to gather intelligence from Nefro and even pursue a more intimate relationship with him. At least if it appeared to be moving in such a direction, but considering what just happened. Not even one hour into my mission and I'm already failing. What the fuck? Fuck off, phone. I stand there for a while in silence, wavering as if on the edge of a cliff before gritting my teeth and clenching my paws into fists. No, none of this. Either I will succeed or I will fail, but in both cases I will continue on and serve the Empire, all for the greater good of Adastra. So, pushing through the guilt and embarrassment and blinking past the blur of moisture in my eyes, I set off aimlessly unsure of where to go, but just wanting to move. As I'm walking quickly through the corridor, I happen to glance out the windows, having forgotten about the nauseatingly bending light, and I feel my stomach lurch instantly. I'm still feeling motivated by my empath epiphany and self-determination, I tell myself in a low, stern voice, No. I force myself to continue looking while I walk, demanding my stomach to settle, no matter how insistent I am, however, it doesn't appear that I have gained voluntary control over the mechanisms that dictates my nausea in my body. Already irritated by my early failings, I force myself to continue staring, feeling as if I'm punishing myself for being unable to handle the view. It's similar to when I experienced insomnia when I was first away from home at university. It was disturbingly satisfying to tell one's own body that it that it was its own fault for being so tired through the day's classes and that maybe it should sleep next time. I do the same now, mentally sneering at my roiling stow match for being so weak that it can't handle my meandering thoughts are brought to a very sudden and rude end as my feet catch something on the floor and my paws flail out for something to grab. I yelp loudly before landing heavily on my side, my paw pads slapping the smooth, hard floor to keep from falling further. Rubbing at the left side of my hip, I look down at my feet in confusion. Three metallic-looking containers sit at the middle in the middle of the corridor, and my foot had caught the corner of the one sticking out furthest. Huh? There's a heavy grunt that I recognize immediately as Brunus sticks his head around an open door with a stern squint before looking down and seeing me. Skip! The hell you doing? My irritation and self-pity from earlier aren't helped by this new turn of events. I get to my feet roughly, likely flashing Brunus with my undergarments as I don't bother trying to keep myself decent. Why would you... S whatever. He's a type to not care anyway. Is leaving your belongings out for others to injure themselves upon a normal Camian custom? Oh, Brunus blinks at me, probably due to the fact that he's never seen me in such a state. Huh? I'm moving stuff in right now. Is it a wolf thing to not look where you're going? I'm simply curious as to whether or not I will need to be more careful if I return to Adastra in one if I want to return to Adastra in one piece. 
The hell crawled up your ass, Skip. I sigh and massage the bridge of my snoot with both paws, feeling my stomach lurch again, exacerbated by my falling. I don't know, Brutus. Um, can I get an anti anti emetic, please? Certainly. A drone has been dispatched to your location. Speaking of which, I just had to deal with Nefru biting my head off for being too fat. I turn my attention back to Brunus. Speaking of which, what do you mean by that? Uh, no, oh, speaking of things up your ass, oh shit. Brunus winces. You guys are kind of uptight about that sort of thing, aren't you? I'm more annoyed that he's pointing it out, but as is usual, my moments of frustration and irritation never last long. Already I can feel it running out of steam. It's difficult to be mad at Brunus anyway. Yes, uptight, speaking of. Anyway, I'm sorry that I snapped at you. I'm not feeling well. Yeah, looks like Yang. Brunus watches as I am suddenly distracted by a smooth, glossy black dome that levitates toward me and extends a tiny white wafer. I take it with some confusion. Uh, thanks. Do I need water or... Goes under the tongue. I try not to visibly blanch at the idea of letting vile medication sit in my mouth for several minutes. Oh, uh, all right. Anyway, what were you saying about Nefru being upset? I doubt he would purposely criticize your size. Carefully drop the square wafer under my tongue, hardly feeling it land before I close my mouth, and it dissolves instantly. I take a medication like that. Bruna shrugs. I don't know, honestly. I was in the hall bringing stuff in, and he told me to move and not take up the entire space or something. Scurry it off before I could probably yell back at him. You two fighting or something? Brutus looks at me, waiting for a response. I point in my mouth and remind him that the medication of the medication, while being simultaneously glad that I have an excuse not to respond. Oh, you can swallow. It's made of weird. It's made of with some weird nanotech stuff that makes you absorb it in like a few seconds. Though Brunus doesn't sound very sure, he's surely right. While the routine of administration might be different from anti-nausea medication I've had on Adastra, uh, the side effects definitely are not. I feel a familiar fatigue set in behind my eyes, one that I associate with bloating due to the being the only, due to that being the only occasion I took the drug. While I'd rather be more alert, I notice the nausea instantly gone, and I'm glad for this Camian nanotech. And though I expect the taste to be bitter and acrid, it is instead slightly sweet and almost non-existent. Fascinating. I say it to myself, though Brutus responds with a face of disgust. I'd rather feel sick than take that shit. It makes me want to sleep all day. Pap takes care of motion sickness and all my other problems, too. Wolverine looks down at the large crates. By the way, you're rooming with me. I already pushed your stuff in. I take a look at Brunus to peer inside at a small room with two beds on either side, one of which already has two identical metal crates next to it. Oh, thank you, Brunus. It only makes me feel more guilty knowing that he had hauled my belongings in first. Sure. Don't know why you, they dropped all our shit here instead of in the actual room, though. Yo, um! silent for a moment, and I wonder if Brunus failed to summon the AI, but then I remember how it works. Give me some pap! They destroyed my stash on Adastra. Brunus gives me a knowing look. Probably destroyed by that asshole magistrate. I bet he's high off his ass right now. Or destroyed. For the sake of how tap! I'm confused by the sudden change in tone, then I realize he's responding to something Om said. I suppose there are downsides to having an AI that only you can hear. You want me to list everything? Headache, backache, stomachache, heartache. Yeah, great, thanks. Brunus turns his attention back to me and I look down at one of the crates. Normally it would be levitating slightly off the ground though the, through the use of magnets, though I suppose the floor is not compatible. Here, I'll push these ones inside. It sounds like you're in a great deal of pain. Brunus shrugs. Now live. 
You just gotta give Om enough reason to justify dealing it out. How do I get helping, though? I grunt as I slide one of the cases across the floor, wishing that it had at least ten wheels. Isn't drug usage free and plentiful on Camia? Brunus makes a snorting sound. That's what they tell you in wolf school? His knowing, condescending tone makes me furrow my brows. Instead of allowing my emotions to take control like I did after talking to Nefru, I take a deep breath and let the defensive anger flow out with it. Snide remarks about wolves are something I will hear regularly, so this is a good opportunity to practice separating my emotions and my work. Well, not told, but shown footage of addicted Camians in the streets of the capital. Typical they'd show propaganda like that. Is it not true? Doesn't matter if it's true, what matters is that they're using what they're using it for. I decided to let the topic go at that point, feeling as if I'd successfully defended Adastra's reputation, at least for now. Brunus gives a much louder grunt as he follows me into the room, pushing the last crate. Anyway, it does seem that you're in a lot of pain. I come to a stop at the foot of what I assume is Brunus's bed, while the Wolverine follows shortly after. Huh, one sec. He stoops to catch his breath. Whew, if the aches are bad, I gotta get a script from the place the palace doctor. The place doctor. My slightly strained breathing is dwarf dwarfed by the huffing and panting of the wolverine as he leans heavily against the crate. I don't like him very much because not being able to feel, feel pain is kind of scary to me. Like I said, it ain't bad. Brunus sits on the crate, his sizable rear covering most of it. Oh, uh, well, Pap helps you a bit with that. It's mostly mental shit where it really does wonders for me. Keeps me sane, I think. Oh? How so? I try not to seem too interested. Even though we're not on a Dastra, the idea of psychoactive... Si the idea of a psychoactive drug like this is... frightening. Well, I guess it kind of makes everything make a little more sense. I guess it slows stuff down so I can think through it properly. That sounds rather nice. And what I like most about it is that it makes emotions feel more meaningful, I guess. I don't know, never had to explain it before, it just feels good. Ray's brow. Doesn't that get in the way of your work? I know, he smokes the pipe almost constantly, so while I can comprehend using it for leisure, but important work on behalf of the parents? No, that's the thing. I feel things better. It's easier to empathize, and that's important for diplomacy. I think wanting to... I think wanting to inquire more about emotions and diplomacy, but I'm also unsure if I should be discussing such matters with Brunus. I spared the decision as a soundless drone floats into the cabin, this time extending a small black capsule about the size of my thumb. Brunus, is eye Brunus eyes this dispassionately before plucking the capsule rather aggressively from the drone. Thanks, this will last me a solid half hour, um. Anyway, uh... Brunus uses a flicking motion with his thumb to open the tiny capsule. You shouldn't let personal shit get in the way. But it's important you to emphasize, empathize, empathize, sorry, with the side you're negotiating with. I watch him pack the strange pipe contraption for a while, the Wolverine handling the flaky green concoction carefully so as to not spill any of it. Does it help with... Uh, distracting thoughts? Can't stop myself from asking. I have, for the most part, been able to keep myself in check for the better part of two years, but the past hour has left me feeling as if it's all about, all about to fall apart. I realized then how desperate I am for some kind of solution, a fix for this dysfunctional brain of mine. I suppose my approach isn't subtle, however. Brunus leans back and eyes me closely, his pipe held in one paw. And mine? It's different for everyone. But I know people that use it to focus. You doing okay, by the way? D definitely 
As you know, it's very illegal to possess such substances on the Dastra, so I'm simply curious about this part of Camian culture. Brunus continues to study me, and I try to keep my paws from fidgeting by clasping them together. Well, Pap is just a Camian strain of Chronoma, which is native to Amorpha. Kind of funny that it's been on a Dastra when you guys borrowed so much from the cats. <laughs> Brunus winks at me to lighten the jab, even though I'm too anxious at the idea of this plant to work myself up over it. Anyway, if you really are interested, I can take you to an amorphous dispensary. The cats really know their shit when it comes to anything plant-related, obviously. I got a bunch of stuff that might be better for you. Ah, uh, well, uh, I don't think I would... Brunus can clearly see that I'm interested, which only convinces me to back out of this odd, reckless attempt to fix myself. While I know that much of the education I re while I know that much of the re education I received on the use of recreational drugs was simply state propaganda, I still feel deeply uneasy about it. Using a drug to patch over a mental deficiency like mine simply feels unwise. A few years ago, I once asked my doctor for an anti-anxiety script only for him to tell me that he only prescribes sedatives to females. Even now, my cheeks burn at the memory. Just as I'm about to head over to my side of the room, however, Brunus sticks his pipe out toward me. Want a puff? I know it's not a wolf thing, but it'd be rude of me not to offer. I stare at the pipe for a moment, my curiosity rekindled. Besides, it might help with your issues. If you got any, of course, not saying that you do. I stand unmoving for another moment, knowing that the longer I do so, the more obvious my pup-like apprehension will become. So I make my decision and reach for the pipe nonchalantly. Well, my purpose is to understand the Camian experience, so I suppose I should. I hold the pipe and realize I'm not exactly sure how I should proceed. Oh, no. All right. Just take a pull on it. In your mouth first, then inhale that and hold it in for a few seconds. Brunus clearly didn't expect me to accept, and I feel some satisfaction at his reaction. I bring the pipe to my lips, trying not to let it visibly tremble. I suck on the opening, hearing a soft hiss from the pipe, then a gentle warmth filling my mouth. As I take the pipe away from my muzzle, a long curl of white vapor follows it. Yeah. Now just breathe it in slow. As Brunus talks, I suck in my breath through my mouth and immediately choke and cough at, as the white smoke blasts out of my muzzle. You took too fast. He said slow, idiot. You never puffed. No, no, he hasn't puffed. That's the point. Whoa, 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 whoa. Brunus leans back and I continue then and then forward to take the pipe from my paw as I double over and continue to cough. For a moment, I'm worried I'm about to suffocate because each time I take in a breath... It hitches in my chest and comes back out in more coughs. And then the next breath comes easier. So does the next. Brunus pats my back in a most awkward way before sticking the pipe into his own mouth. Guess you never smoked anything before then, huh? Shake my head, too busy catching my breath to be able to tell him that smoking anything, even legal herbs, is illegal on a Dastra. I sit down on the, another crate, taking deep breaths and doing my best not to fall into another coffin fit. Well, probably best to leave it at that for now. Uh, wait a few minutes and then see how you feel. I nod, only now aware of the smell I associated with Brunus coating my mouth and the back of my throat. The flavor of it is rather sweet, and not too terribly unpleasant. Still experience of my throat and lungs burning like they did just now leaves me unsure if I'd even want to try it again. Brunus leans back, watching me carefully, as if worried I might keel over. So, what do wolves do for fun in a place where everything's illegal? I rub my chest, leaning back as well so I can breathe easier. Meanwhile, Brutus continues to smoke his pipe, seemingly unaffected by the warm, irritating vapors sitting on his, in his chest. We... Uh, we have alcohol. Saying this reminds me that after learning from my doctor that sedatives were a womanly medication, 
that I should instead go buy some cheap drink in the market. It certainly felt more manly, boldly drinking an entire tankard of toxic-tasting ale while my friends cheered around me. And it did help. At least until I began bl blacking out from drinking too much, and that frightened me away from it. Probably for the best. Brunus makes a face. Ugh, not a fan of the stuff. Makes me sick and give me a headache. I don't enjoy it much either, these days. I mainly partook to better match the mood of my friends on our nights off. This was partially true, but not the main reason. It also hasn't been the same since... <sighs> Nothing's been the same since. Why do I keep telling myself that? Before and after. I'm a different person now. That Scorpio... That Scorpio! Fucking Christ, that CPO died that day. Ah, oh, I get that. And it tastes like shit! Sure, acquired taste and all, but it all tastes the same to me. Just different shades of shit. I feel that only now the conversation is beginning to feel natural between Brunus and I. Like a conversation between friends. It is unfortunate that I'm unable to respond because I am dead. What? I died. And now I... And now... Now... What is now? I feel an odd tingling throughout my body, along with a tickling sensation in my thighs and groin. The sensation is similar to one that I felt when I was almost murdered. And suddenly my heart begins to pound. Then I look back up to see Brunus staring back at me. I don't know why he's here, and suddenly very little makes sense. I don't know what's happening, and I'm able to sense that something is very strange at that moment. No, something is very wrong at the moment. At the, that moment, or is it forever? Skip. Uh -huh. I jerk my head to look at him, trying not to appear as confused and disoriented as I feel. You feeling it? You alright? Watch the pipe bob up and down as he talks around it. I remember that in another time, or another dimension, I was on a ship in the warp drive headed for Camia. I had just taken a small but intensely hot and harsh mouthful of vaporized pap into my lungs. It was only for a moment, no more than a second before I coughed it back out. I gripped onto the cool metal edges of the crate, trying to ground myself to hold onto something so that I wouldn't drift into nothing. I tried to remind myself of what's happening. This is Pappy Way. How strange that my cognitive state is so warped, yet I can still think in such a painfully clear way. This is nothing like alcohol. Suddenly, I wish I had listened to all the warnings I'd been given on Adastra. Some people were never the same after using certain substances, driven to insanity forever. I try to remember if Pap was one of them, but a rush of fear begins to overwhelm me. I look to Brunus to calmly and politely inquire for assistance, though I'm not sure how I can be assisted. Uh, I need... Brunus's expression is hard to understand as context continues to escape my grasp, but I am at least able to understand that his eyes are narrowed, looking almost suspicious. Or maybe malicious. Did he purposely give me something harmful? He seems perfectly fine when he smoked the pipe himself as if space and time are not breaking down for him, and yet... As if I'm mentally decomposing. My frequent nightmares are dissolving into the amalgamation, have. Fr uh, of dissolving into the amalgamation, have suddenly become fully realized. Despite this, I try to keep my expression stoic as a vague past self version of me reminds myself not to jeopardize the mission. Or is this the future where I've already disappeared into the timeless, spaceless orgy of hellish agony? <laughs> His voice is oddly deep and resonant, and I shift backwards, unable to remember what I'd needed. He reaches out to me, and I grab at his paw like it's a small flotation device in a vast sea. Don't bother trying to swim, little wolf. Your parents have left you to drown forever. A voice I've only heard in my dreams suddenly whispers directly into my ear, 
It's a real voice, not like the one that comes from my head or imagination. It's a rustling of dead leaves, rattling out of the throat of something ancient and evil. I yelp and lurch backwards, suddenly, and suddenly feel the sensation of falling. I must have died. That's the only explanation for this. I am dead, and this is forever. The parents must be evil if this is what they planned. Shit! Brunus's big, hearty voice cries out, and I'm at least comforted by the fact that he is here with me. His exclamation is paired with a jolt of pain that shoots from my head down to my neck. I lay on the forest path, having fallen from the branches above. I'd prepared to jump down and surprise my mother. Instead, I had fallen and landed on my back. It was the worst pain I'd ever experienced. But through that pain, I watched my, brother, my mother rush to my aid. She held me as I wailed, stroking my head. Ma! Suddenly, I'm back in this hellish metal room. Right now, all I want is to be back home. Shit, 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 send it right to Kalam! I want to be young and free from, my pris from the prison my mind has become since the riots. I want to be a pup, being held by my mother, knowing that something is, someone is there to help me whenever I fall. Now I'm trapped, completely out of my element, and there's no one to help me. I just curl up and sob, submitting myself to whatever this is, whatever existence has become. I don't fight the feeling of rough paws all around me, picking me up and sitting me down on something soft. I look and see that I'm sitting on a bed with the big wolverine in front of me. Hey, hey don't worry, kid. kid. This is all the... Lift up your tongue for me so I don't have to, please. Simply tired at this point, I do as I'm told, feeling something light and dry being set under my tongue. Okay, now oh, yeah, you can close it and uh, let's sit there. Once again, I do as I'm told. The initial rush of disorientation has faded, and I feel that I'm attached back to reality, albeit with a delicate thread. The tightness of my chest eases, and the feelings of grief and dread lessen. My breathing evens out as a warm glow replaces the emptiness in my chest. Alright. Alright. You're good now, right? Listen to that deep, hypnotic voice, riding the smooth, melodic tones that I never noticed before. His expression is so full of guilt and worry that I feel as if I should be the one helping him. My thoughts are still scattered in every direction, though, so I find it difficult to respond. Oh, skip, skip your scaring the shit out of me right now! Something heavy pats my cheek, then shakes my shoulder. Uh, I'm gonna get an effort so you can help you out, okay? I need to leave for just a bit to find it, alright? Alright, be right back. Just stay there, like that. Simply watch as the wolverine backs away from me, his paws outstretched as if holding my figure together with his paws, like a delicate vase about to tip over. Again, his demeanor makes me feel as if I'm, as if he's the one that should be taken care of, but the sedative leaves me content with simply watching. And I see him run for probably the first time ever before he disappears out of the doorway, the heavy thuds of his footsteps fading away into the distance. With Brunus gone, I focus on the sounds around me, appreciating their complexities, likely resulting from even more complex Camian machinery. I know that what just happened was a horrible, even traumatic event, but right now, I don't want to think of it. For the first time in a long while, I feel calm and clear-headed, even under the effects of Pat. I know it's artificial, and it's such a, but it's such a relief that I only want to relish it. I even smirk a bit at the situation I'm in right now, at the ridiculousness of it all. I need to talk to someone. I need to talk to Neferu. First, I'd like to ask why the hell he became so angry with me. A childish part of me would even like to blame him for this state I found myself in. 
as I wait for Nefru, whose presence I long for, even if I'd rather not him not see me like this, a new sound joins the cacophony of ship noises. Well, maybe not a noise from the ship. It seems out of the ordinary, especially compared to the other sounds, so I focus on it. I realize that it's coming from behind me, from the wall my bed is pushed up against. It's odd, almost like it's separate from everything else I'm hearing, in a way that is similar to Om. Could it be a type of interference picked up by my lingua? I wouldn't be surprised, considering the Camians use it to broadcast their AI. I feel I should bring this up with Amicus. That we should give, first give consent before our linguas are accessed. Choice. A whisper of leaves. I'm unsure if it's if what I heard was real or not. So I crawl on my bed to the wall and press my ear against it, closing my eyes. The parents throw all to the sea without choice. What? I whisper back, fascinated and slightly apprehensive. Does Pap make one hear voices? I hope so, because the alternative is frightening. And now you tread water, putting off the inevitable. I grip the wall tightly, feeling a prick of fear through the warmth of sedation. How long do you think you will last? Suddenly, the imagery comes to mind, to my mind in a way that is most unnatural. I see myself in profile, pressing against the wall, while beyond, I see the shape of something dark and ema emaciated. It mirrors my position, its face to the wall as it whispers right into my ear. You are drowning, Skip. The icy fear cli climbs up my chest, up neck, up neck. And I start to feel as if I can't breathe. Everyone drowns in the end. And the end is forever. Skip. Skip! I open my eyes, still kneeling on the bed, ear pressed to the wall. Never's expression is one that confirms exactly what I feared. I do not belong on this mission. That is what the very awkward silence in the air tells me. I don't move, though, though I know I should, at least pretend that I'm not listening to voices in the wall right now. Runa stands in the door, looking over Neferu's shoulder, his expression even more dismayed than it was the last I'd seen it. Skip. Skip. Neferu repeats my name, approaching me cautiously in the same way that Brunus left me, as if I might break if I moved too suddenly. I stare a moment longer, then clear my throat and pull away from the wall as casually as I'm able. Nonchalance is a difficult thing to pull off in the moment. Especially when I realize that my robes are riding up to nearly my hips from my unorganized clambering onto the bed. The two don't seem to mind, however, as I smooth them back down over my thighs and carefully sit on the edge of the bed. I clear my throat carefully. Yes? Still, my voice is cracked and broken like I've just entered adolescence. I swallow back some embarrassment. Are you all right? I try to find my, find enough saliva in my mouth to respond in a less broken way, but as I do, never whirls on Brunus. I left, left him, him for literally, literally ten, ten minutes. minutes. How, How did you manage, manage to leave him in such a state in so little time? time? What? what? I jump, even though he's yelling at Brunus, mostly because everything still sounds oddly resonant. I try to cover this up by standing in one smooth motion. Unfortunately, my coordination seems rather miserable now, and I stumble forward slightly. At this moment, Nefru catches me, carefully pressing me back onto the bed. I am well, just... Oh, shit, sorry, I forgot he's... I am well, just slightly dizzy from the antiemetic that Om gave me. I'm rather pleased with how well I'm putting words together, despite my disoriented mindset. Yes, I'm sure that is the only problem. Nefru glares at Brunus. What the fuck is fucking Nefru's head? What the hell? <laughs> His head is one, way too big. Two, 
His neck is broken in this picture. Three, his jaw is huge and like way too bent up at the base of it. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. on. See, he's looking better by the minute. You're, You're good, good now, now, ain't you, Skip? Yes, I am in a state that is good. Uh, were, you were you hearing, hearing something, something in the ship? ship? Are the, the sounds, sounds worrying you? Never gestures at the wall. Oh, yes. Never reminds me of what was just bothering me. Who's in the room next to us? I heard a voice. Wait a moment. No, I was definitely not supposed to say that. My mind is not working. Especially the part that concerns memory, and though the sedative is powerful, I still feel anxiety prick at the surface. There ain't a room next to us. Prunus, what the hell did you give him? Whoa, just a pap! And I guess one of those chill pills to calm it down a bit. You guess? Um, what did you give Skip? Use the room speakers, please. I feel a fur on my neck bristle as the sound of Om's smooth, sapient voice, sapient voice, sapient-like voice, drifts down gently from the ceiling. Uh, I guess I can't use the calm voice then, because it's smooth and sapient-like. Ah, is the calm voice getting retired? Let me know in the comments down below. Should I keep it as the calm voice, or as the voice I'm about to give? Sepia, do you wish to reveal your medication history to Nefru and Brutus? Brunus! I keep saying Brutus. I stare at Nefru's chest in front of me for a moment, trying to keep my expression normal. Yes. Very well. Sepia was administered one anti-nausea wafer, 25 milligrams, and one anti-anxiety wafer, 10 milligrams, both within the last hour. He also inhaled approximately 1.75 milligrams of the psychoactive compound ANLA via vaporized poppy way. I get lost in Om's rather beautiful voice. Oh, thank you. Uh, but he must be saying things that Nefru doesn't like because he keeps giving Brunus very cross looks. Are there any interactions among these medications? The anti-emetic and anti-anxiety drugs can potentate sedation when used in combination. And anything that causes one to hear voices? There's a long pause, and for some reason it is only now that I'm understanding how terrible this actually is. They think I'm losing my mental abilities, which is exactly what I feared. Psychosis is a rare side effect of poppy weight consumption in which auditory hallucinations can result. I see. Nefru glares at Brunus again. Do note that this side effect normally occurs at higher doses. According to the medical literature, no psychoactive symptoms have ever been observed in doses below 10 milligrams. See! He barely took a puff! I've never seen anyone lose it like that, even when they take too much! I frown, not necessarily liking the way I'm being talked about, especially with me sitting right here. <laughs> the fucking head! It's so cartoonish. But what, what about, about in combination with other drugs? drugs? He, he seemingly, seemingly barely, he's, he seems barely, barely able to stay awake, awake. he's so, so sedated. sedated. Most, Most people, people wouldn't even feel a thing from just one, one. yes, but, but he's, he's a wolf. wolf. He's never experienced mind-altering drugs, and I doubt there is much in the medical literature about wolf intolerance to Pappy Way. If that's all it takes to get him high, then why hasn't he ever freaked out like that just sitting next to me? I mean, has he ever really sat near you? If you did not know, Pap smells terrible. He likely moved away from the moment you got close. I go back and forth, and I close my eyes, beginning to imagine their voices in a sparring match. It reminds me of one time Nefru managed to convince the Wolverine to Wolverine, Christ, Wolverine to spar. Despite his build and size, Brunus isn't much of a fighter. The match barely lasted more than a minute before Brunus was on his knees and retching so la so loud he sounded like a giant squawking bird. I laugh loudly. Voices go quiet again. I open my eyes and look back at him. Yeah, that's gonna be horrifying. Take it from someone who has schizophrenia. 
people don't take kindly to random bouts of insane laughter without a noticeable provocation. I open my eyes and look back at them. At this moment, I decide I'm tired of being gawked at. So I clear my throat again. Did you know that it's rather rude to talk about someone who is in the same room in a way that suggests that they are not there? They continue to look surprised until Nefru seems to break out of the trance. Yes, yes. Sorry, sorry about, about that, that Skip. Skip. You, you know, know that, that Brunus, Brunus and I often get in. into... Well, discuss something that does not have to do with me, then. I am very tired, so I'm going to lay down now. Ah, uh, I, I see. see. Are you sure? I am fine. It's best not to worry about me. I've expected Nefri to become angry again, but he doesn't. I feel a semblance of guilt under the drug haze, and I earnestly do just want to lay down. And so that's what I do. The vague guilt morphing into some smug satisfaction at seeing the two of them left to awkwardly stand about. It's nice not to be the one that is feeling off kilter. I think that they've left, but their voices mumble back and forth for a while. Then it goes quiet. And then I fall asleep. Oh, slow fade out. Oh, that was a fake out. Ooh, Brazen Q550, thank you for the subscribe. Thank you.